Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another Thomas and Friends engine review. So you might remember that I have already reviewed an Edward once, uh, sometime last year I think it was I reviewed the Hornby one, and I'm not an expert on Thomas and Friends so I was quite pleased with the Hornby one, but in the comments quite overwhelmingly really you guys were saying the Hornby one's kind of rubbish, you should get the Backman one, it's way way better. So that's... Oops, do you think you might have heard that? So I wasn't, it's nothing personal Edward, it's just what people said. Anyway, just... It's kind of creeping me out actually, he's got one of those terrifying faces, I'll show you that close up later on. So anyway, enough messing around, here it is, this is the uh, the Backman version, and as you can see, just the first thing you'll notice is just how tiny he is compared to the Hornby version. It's uh, really quite incredible how different the two models are. But uh, anyway, I got him from uh, Tutally Thomas, I think it was, he cost around £75, which, you know, it is what it is, it's a bit expensive for a toy really, but uh, Oliver cost nearly that, and Oliver didn't have a tender and he was a little bit smaller than this, so Actually, in the grand scheme of things, the value for money doesn't seem too bad on this, but I'm going to get him out today. A lot of you guys asked for him, so I'm finally doing it. Here we go, this is the Backman Edward. Let's get him out and see what he's like. So yes, there he is inside his packaging, and we'll check in with him just to see how he's doing, and interestingly, he seems to be giving me quite a shifty look from inside there, so yeah, I'm not too sure what's going on there, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah, but as you can tell, it is just the standard uh, sort of Backman Thomas and Friends packaging. It's the slightly older version without the clouds and things. I've had a couple now that have had that, uh, so I think the clouds is something that they've just brought in recently, but uh, anyway, it's the same sort of thing. And on the back, yeah, it's just the usual kind of thing. I won't spend much time showing you that because you've seen it all before, but it shows you some of the other engines, of course, you can buy from the range, of course. So uh, let's get this out, uh, well, let's get him out and uh, take a look. So yeah, as you might expect, as I always do, I've cut the back of the packaging so that I could put him back in after I've tested him, and uh, you've seen him in a video or two already, so uh, you know that he's been out of here before. But uh, nonetheless, let's get him out. I'm just going to grab hold of his sort of tray, if I can. Whoops. There we go. So there's Edward and his tender, of course. And I'm just going to delve into the packaging once again to grab the paperwork and show you that briefly, because it's always fun to see the faces, I think. All right, so it's just this folded up pack. Uh, you've got the warranty card, it looks like. You've got the exploded diagram, that's the interesting part. And what's this last one out of interest? Um, it's just a massive page of text, it looks like. Oh, again, it's stuff about the warranty, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so here's the exploded diagram. Oh, yes, this is a scary one. Are you ready? Hide your faces, kids. Look at that. There's the face just there. Blimey, that looks like... I don't know what it looks like. Leather face? I don't know. <laughs> Let's not mention leather face in these kids' videos. Anyway, so that's, that's the exploded diagram. And as you can see, it's got a list of all the parts, and there are hundreds of them. Look at that. Uh, but yeah, quite a good diagram, that. It should help with the servicing and things. So yep, yeah, that's fair enough. Quite nice to have that. I'm glad I looked at that one. Ooh, won't be able to unsee that in my dreams tonight. Anyway, let's get the tender out first, then. And it's quite a weird-looking tender. So here it is. It's tiny. Probably one of the smallest tenders I've ever had. But presumably it is HO, and Edward will be HO as well, of course. But as you can see, the axle boxes are really weird. They sort of dangle down from the uh, the main body of the tender, and the wheels are just attached there. It looks really flimsy, but they're not really. It's quite good quality, quite thick plastic. So, uh, yep, yeah, there's the tender. I'll show you that more in a moment, you know, up close. So that's that. And let's get Edward out. And again, he's absolutely tiny. I wasn't expecting him to be as small as this, uh, but he is. So there he is. There's Edward. There's his face, as you can see. And as always, I'm going to show you him a lot closer up in just a second. But uh, look at the wheelbase. I mean, you can forget the bogey wheels, really, because they don't do anything, really, apart from maybe support him slightly. But uh, these are the wheels that have the pickups and the driving on them. So, uh, yeah, just look at that. Really, really uh, close together. So as we know, that is a little bit of a problem when he runs, uh, because it was a problem uh, the first time I ran him in a video, but uh, I think I managed to fix it during that video, didn't I? So it should be better. Right, let me hold him with the tender then. Here comes the tender. We just couple that on. Yep, there we go. So there he is. Uh, really quite cute, actually. The Hornby one wasn't that cute, for reasons I'll get into probably another day. But uh, this one really is. You can tell that it's been purpose-built to look like Edward, and the model's very good for it. So anyway, here's a little bit of history on Edward, uh, a few updates on him for you, and uh, then I'll get onto the white background and show you him close up. Okay, here we go. So Edward was built as a Furness Railway K2 in 1896, making him one of the oldest engines on Sodor. 
Even though the other engines tease him a little bit because of his age, he's generally very knowledgeable and kind, always willing to teach the others a thing or two. As a very wise and reliable engine, Edward runs his own branch line with the help of Bill and Ben. Since turning 120 years old though, Edward seems to have gone missing from Sodor, and two female engines have arrived in his place. His current whereabouts are unknown sadly, but we do hope he's with a railway that still finds him useful. Okay, let's have a close up look at him then. Alright, so there he is then, Edward the blue engine up against the white background, and yes, as I said, very very different from the Hornby version, and actually I've been thinking about maybe doing a direct comparison between this and the Hornby one, so if that's something you'd like to see, click the like button to let me know, and if I get a lot of likes on this, I will consider doing that one day. But uh, anyway, for now, let's talk about the model itself. Now, when I first got him out, I noticed that he was a little bit dirty, he just seemed dirty, and I've managed to clean most of the dirt off, but there are a couple of blemishes still left for example on his face he's got quite a nasty mark there which does look like dirt but it doesn't seem to come off so I think it is a mark uh, so we might need to go to the doctor's or I don't know the vet where would you take him with that um, <laughs> yeah because if it's contagious I don't want it but uh, yeah there's a couple of areas like the the back of the cab roof for example just looks a little bit unfinished and uh, there's a very tiny nitpick on the front buffer beam as you can see the coupling hook is a bit skew if as well uh, so yeah not major problems and he's going to run just fine and for the most part he looks just fine but uh, normally these Backman Loco arrive in you know perfect pristine condition and this one wasn't quite as good as that but it's still not bad anyway let's take a look at his face and he does look a bit strange with his eyes looking over to one direction like that but it is a good face and I've heard that other people quite like this one and that they find it quite realistic so that's good to hear I'm no expert but I'll go along with that yeah it looks good to me and the detail on the rest of the model is quite basic I'm not gonna lie and of course it is because it's a toy but the painted detail actually is pretty good so uh, as you can see the boiler has got these uh, bands on them red bands which is nicely done and the whole of his body really has got quite a bit of lining especially around the cab on the bottom part you've got the red lining and then up towards the windows they are lined in yellow of course they're not glazed but uh, none of these Backman Thomas and Friends locos have been uh, so I suppose that's fair enough you've also got the running board done into a couple of different colors the uh, the sort of side of the running board is done into red as you would expect and then up on the top of the running board it's done into a very lovely gray which I think is really quite attractive um, I don't know where that came from I don't know where the idea for that came from but a lot of the Thomas and Friends engines have that and it's quite a nice look Interestingly, for a loco that is not very detailed, he does have separately fitted lamp irons, which I find always quite unusual. But uh, yeah, they are there, and it's quite a nice touch, which is nice. And of course, as I said, you've also got the coupling hook and the buffers fitted onto the buffer beams, and you've also got a vacuum pipe on there, it looks like as well. No sprung buffers, of course, but that's pretty much to be expected. If we look inside the cab, you can see that it isn't just a filled-in cab, as some of them have been. It is a physical space inside there that you can look into, although most of it is taken up by this sort of uh, black dome, which presumably holds some of the mechanism. But it is a little bit more realistic, at least, than some of them have been, which is good news. And as far as the separately fitted parts go, it is fairly minimal. You've got the whistle here just in front of the cab, which protrudes out quite nicely. And considering that this model is really, you know, designed for children to play with, that's quite a nice, um, intricate detail, isn't it? it really and uh, yeah you want to be careful with it obviously but uh, yeah it is nice so quite a nicely molded thing I think he's very well proportioned in comparison to the Hornby one that's what I will say but uh, yeah like I say if you want me to do a direct comparison between the two I can do that one day so as I've already pointed out the tender is something of a point of intrigue because as I say the underframe is really bizarre you don't really have any underframe of any kind except for the axle boxes which uh, drop down. I don't know if there are any locos in real life that look like that but certainly it's a really interesting and uh, quite cartoonified look to a tender and I quite like it it's really weird and as you can see the wheels are done in blue which is nice and then of course you've got the regular paintwork as you can tell you've got the number two and the red lining around it and on top very very fine coal actually, extremely realistic coal in comparison to the rest of the model, which uh, is fine by me, looks good, but elsewhere on the tender it is fairly basic, obviously there's no riveting or anything like that, it is just a glossy finished tender uh, with a fairly detailed buffer beam, but apart from that, that's just about it. So there you have it, there's Edward, let's get on to performance then and uh, talk about how he runs. Now obviously the Hornby one has uh, more pickups than uh, this one does, because uh, he is tender driven, the Hornby one, so he's got pickups in the loco and also pickups in the tender. 
tender. The Backman version doesn't have that luxury because the tender is purely just a dummy look. It's not attached in any way other than just that little drawbar, so there's no wires going to the tender or anything like that. So really, he is just relying on his driving wheels, four of them there, which, as we've already seen in the past, is a bit of a problem for him, but uh, we'll do a little bit of a thorough test right now and see how that goes. All right, let's give that a try. Okay, so there is Edward down onto the track, looking very, very smart, as all of these Backman Thomas and Friends models always do. And he's about to be coupling up to these three Eleni Artic coaches. Now, during the intro video, he did actually pull four, but as you saw, he was wheel slipping terribly while he was doing that, and that isn't good for them. So I'm just going to knock it down to three to be safe. But if I'm going to be serious for just a second, there are a few running issues with this Loco uh, to do with the design. Um, basically, one of the problems is that he's too front heavy and he has a tendency to rock forwards like this. And obviously when that happens, um, the back wheels don't make contact with the track, which results in quite massive power losses. And it can also result in uh, only two wheels on the whole model picking up power. And, you know, as a toy, and as quite an expensive toy at £75, I think a very basic requirement for this is for it to run reliably for kids, you know, because £75 could easily be the entire Christmas or birthday budget for some children. And so it needs to, you know, it needs to be fit for purpose. And so really, a little more weight in the, in the back of the model would improve the power. It would mean that it could pull more than three coaches for a start, but it would mean that it would be more stable on the track. And also a little bit more weight in the tender and tender pickups would have been a much better deal for £75. And I think, again, for £75, tender pickups and a little bit more weight is not too much to ask. And really, that should have been a given for the massive price tag. Because if I show you this on the express points... It's not really good enough, is it? So, yeah, a little bit of a problem there. But uh, if I do show you the slow speed, it really is good. Let me show you. Look at that. Great performance. So clearly he's got a good old motor in there with some decent gearing. Let's see how slow it can go. Yeah, really, really quite good. Fantastic slow speed performance. But again, this is for kids. Kids don't want to be taking them off the track and adjusting the pickups. In fact, most kids won't be able to do that. They don't want to be taking them off the track every 10 minutes and cleaning the wheels because he stops on every curve and every point. And I think, you know, if manufacturers stopped and thought about not just children, but the people buying their models, uh, instead of just thinking about making money, um, I think the hobby would be a better place. But uh, yeah, tender pickups would really, really help this model because it is a problem on the points. And because these are the only two wheels that pick up and they're so close together, um, you know, it's a problem which could have been easily avoided. Anyway, yeah, I'm sorry for grumbling, but I really do think that when a model is as basic yet as expensive as this, it at least needs to run 100% reliably, if for no other reason than to give children value for money and give them something to enjoy and at something that just works, you know what I mean? Right, so let me put the camera on the front of him then and show you his eyes working. There we go, I think I'll send him backwards just because I don't want him stopping on the points again. There we go, yep, they looked over there pretty quick. Let's do that again. So yep, as you can see, the eyes do work, which is a very nice feature, of course. And that's something that the Hornby ones don't do. And that's the kind of good value for money feature I'm talking about. Yeah, it's pretty good, that is. Okay, let's send him back to his coaches then and couple to them. See how he does with those. There we go. Right, I'm going to set him forwards. And obviously, we can guess that he'll pull them without a problem because we've seen him do four. He is a little bit underpowered and it's a shame that he isn't more stable on the track, as you can see quite unstable but once he gets going at a decent speed it is fine he does seem to work without much of a problem so let's do that then let me get him started and i'll let you see the coaches go by there they go three l and the artiques for you there and on the middle line i am running the hornby edward here he comes now which actually has a massive advantage over the backman version in terms of performance because he is tender driven which generally as a rule i don't like but he does have pickups on the loco on the driving wheels, or on the driving wheels in inverted commas, and also pickups on the tender, which means, as you saw when he came over those express points, he goes without a problem. And he's also way more powerful. As you can see here, he's got five coaches, which he manages without trouble at all. So in performance, um, the Hornby version beats the Backman one hands down. Finally then, on the inside line, I'm running an engine that hasn't shown himself for a little while, and I think it's time he did. So here he is, it's James, the splendid red engine. Enjoy seeing these guys run and see who else you can spot on the layout. 
As is clear though, the Batman Edward is much better proportioned. He looks a lot more like his character. So it has got that going for it. The Hornby one, as you know, is... Well, it kind of looks a little bit like a mutant monstrosity in comparison because, of course, it wasn't designed to be Edward to start with. It was designed to look like a D-49, which it does. And, of course, Edward doesn't look like a D-49, which is the biggest problem. But, like I say, it runs just fantastically. It really does. There comes the Batman Edward, just covered up a little bit by the Hornby one. Ugh. A couple more characters in the background there for you. There goes James, with Pullman coaches, which I don't think I mentioned, and he feels very, very special, almost like a celebrity when he's got Pullman coaches. And there's Edward number two. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to distinguish between them normally. I think Edward one and two works, or we could give them funny middle names or something, I don't know. Mechanically, though, he seems sound enough. He runs nicely, as you can tell, quietly and smoothly, which is, you know, points in his favour. So here are my ratings then for the Bankman Edward. Detail, first of all, I've given it 2 out of 5. Yes, I know he's not really supposed to be that detailed, and he certainly isn't. So I've had to be fair and give it 2 out of 5, because I think that's what it deserves. Power, 3 out of 5. It wasn't too bad. As I said, to start with, he did manage 4 coaches, but it was a real struggle. But certainly knocking him down to 3 on my layout is absolutely fine. But of course, if you've got a layout that is super flat with big long straights and uh, sort of <laughs> long sweeping curves, he'll probably manage 4 or 5 without much of a problem. Slow speed, 4 out of 5. The slow speed itself is absolutely fantastic. His slow running is at a really, really high standard, actually. Except, of course, when he gets to points when it just kills him dead because of his wheelbase. Quality, then, 4 out of 5. Generally, he's good and sturdy. There were a couple of issues with the paintwork, some of which I've managed to clean up, some of which I can't. But generally, good quality, so I've given it 4 out of 5. Value then for £75, what you really get is a quite simple model, which doesn't perform fantastically just because of the, the size and dimensions of it. So really, I don't think it's great value. It's not terrible, and if you love Thomas and Friends and if you love Edward, then, you know, it's worth it. But uh, it's not great value for money, so 2 out of 5. Overall then, that gives him 6.17 out of 10. Sounds like quite a harsh score, and really, the model isn't terrible. It's just too expensive for what it is, and really, it's not reliable enough to be a good toy. The driving wheels are just too close together, they're the only wheels that pick up, so really it just doesn't run like it should, and maybe kids would be disappointed with that. I'm not sure, but I think I might have been, because you're going to be forever cleaning the wheels and removing you know, dust and dirt from the pickups. It's not going to be all that much fun, but it's not terrible, as I say. So that ranks him 12th, just below the Backman Oliver. Unfortunately, he's at the bottom of the list, but I'm sure he won't be for long. <laughs> let's hope something worse comes along so that he doesn't feel so bad. Okay, let's carry on running. So of course I've got to ask the question, which one do you prefer, the Hornby one or the Backman one? I'll include a poll so that you can vote. I think I can guess which one's going to be the winner, but I'm not going to say anything just yet, I'll let you guys decide. But certainly, neither are perfect, and that certainly one has pros over the other, and the other one has pros over the other. They've both got their pros and cons. And I realise that wasn't a very good way of saying that, but hopefully you know what I mean. Okay folks, well that is the end of my review of the very lovely Backman Edward, who overall is a pretty good loco I would say. Overall I can recommend him, he's pretty good. If you enjoyed the video please feel free to leave it a like or even a comment because I do love to hear from you and as always thank you very much for your company, it is lovely to have you here watching. So again thank you for watching and I will see you all very very soon. Cheers everybody.